Okay, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, and most important, I guess, is that uh, I finally got a hold of a of uh, Dave Stinson, Stetson, and uh, he's given me permission to use his design a little bit, uh, as I indicated in the email, a little bit late getting to him, but uh, I kept on using the wrong email address, and it was my fault. And it was interesting how I found out the email address uh, was uh, I had a contact from a, a fellow in, uh, I think it's Diddle, Oklahoma. And he's, uh, he's following our class along. And uh, anyway, so I asked him how, he'd said that he'd been in contact with uh, Dave, so I asked him for the email. And it was one letter, it was the first letter that I had messed up anyway. It was a, a small L, and I had a, a capital. capital I, oh. and then I had a capital L, and it didn't send, so then I just gave up. But anyway, so I, I finally got a hold of them. It's interesting, yep. eh, how the people that are watching your stuff are helping you. With yeah, well, it, it's good feedback, too, because yeah. the guy was really interested. Anyway, here we go. We got, uh, the other thing that was I was asked was the, uh, uh, how I put a uh, the antique finish on and some sort of a formula. So uh, I dug out some of my old notes and Jan's uh, antique uh, finish was uh, one part uh, thinner, one part uh, varathane, and uh, half a part oil linseed oil. So you can put whatever combinations. Now he put that, that in a jar so that he could shake it up. But you, then you add in, uh, you know, the, the oil-based uh, oil paints and you put in uh, oh about a depending on how much liquid you've got you could put in a quarter to a half inch of uh, burnt umber and mix it in and that gives it that dark look so when you put it on your carving it gives it dirties it up and so it hangs up the dark part hangs up in the, the crevices and the deep part so that gives it that uh, that when antique say, look when you say quarter to a half inch is that coming into the tube? That's coming out of a tube. It's a, tube. Well, it's it's the standard oil-based paint okay. tubes. Okay. Yeah. So, what would your um, recipe again? Okay, uh, one one part uh, thinner, one part varathane, and a half a part boiled linseed oil, and then uh, that little dab of. Uh, of uh, burnt umber that darkens it. Uh, typically, when I did that, I uh, uh, I wiped it off afterwards so that I had the high parts uh, wiped off, and you don't want to have drips left on it because it really looks ugly then. And then sit it aside for a couple of days. They give it a couple of days to dry. Pete Leclerc, Leclerc does something a little bit different. Um, he uses a, the uh, natural Watco oil, uh, then he squeezes in uh, some raw sienna and uh, then mixes it in well. So the same thing, uh, it's the oil, the artist oil paint, you know, the uh, raw sienna. So if you can get your access to the uh, Watco uh, natural oil uh, finish, then you, uh, then you can get the that same thing. The raw sienna and the burnt sienna and the burnt umber are fairly close. Very close, uh, yeah. And um, Dave Stetson does his a little bit different again. Uh, his is uh, one part part uh, Watco dark wax and one and five part Watco uh, natural wax. So he just darkens down the natural uh, Watco wax. Uh, with the uh, with the dark wax, just a little bit, and uh, if you mix those together and put them in a jar and put them aside, then uh, either one of those finishes, then you can use it continually. But try it on a a carving that doesn't mean too much to you, and uh, see how it works. So those are both oils for Stetson. Yes, uh, the the what Stetson's is one part Watco W A T C O. Uh, dark wax, and it's it's a wax. It's a liquid wax in a oh, in a can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then uh, five parts the natural, 
Uh, so that's it's a clear that's a clear wax. Also liquid wax. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're both. You can get them both. What about uh, the Claire's ratio? Uh, uh, Pete, Pete Leclerc doesn't do much ratioing. Uh, Pete, it's uh, he used a 16 ounce uh, uh, natural Watco oil, and uh, he put in about an inch of the uh, raw sienna squeezed into it. All right. So there, there is, and that's just three guys. I mean, you can get a whole bunch of different uh, people do different things. Okay, that covers that pretty well. So when I left the house this morning, before I left, I had to find a ball. So if we're going to put a, a hand and have a, a ball, uh, the first thing you've got to realize is how you're going to hang on. How how are they going to hang on to that ball? Let me widen that out. So there there it is, just with a, a standard grip on a on a ball. And you'll notice that the little finger drops down a little bit. But in general, the outside shape of that hand is an arc all the way around. Doesn't matter which angle you put it at, it's a, still an arc all the way around, okay? So that's how you set up your, your hand on your carving, is get that, what, get that arc all the way continuous around. Forget about the wrist and all that, just get that whole hand established. And now you got to decide, well, is he going to have a split finger, fastball, three finger, whatever, you know? So is he going to hang on to it like that? Is he going to hang on to it like that? And, you know, however you want to hang it. But no matter what, see where the thumb is? The thumb is a way down, and the ball is just about buried. And typically with a caricature carving, we have big hands, big feet, big head. So there's the big hand there, and he's going to have a big hand up here. And I've got these all lined up so that you could hopefully see these as we uh, go by. So if you take a look at these two drawings right here, you can see, well, the, the ball itself is a long ways inside. And some of you may not even have to worry about the ball because it's going to be kind of hidden. But... Uh, the whole trick here is we're going to work from the outside in, so we're going to get that outside shape established. So once again, this part of the hand is continuous, it doesn't change. Okay, this is all the same. No matter what shape you put the hand in, okay, it's, it's always got this arc. If you've got the ball in the hand, the arc continues right around to the far side of the thumb. Notice where the thumb comes off. The thumb comes off about halfway between the the knuckle joint here and the wrist here. So, and, but the back of the thumb starts at the wrist and comes all the way. A lot of people get confused with the thumb. The thumb is an appendage off the side. It has only two joints, where, or two sections to it, where the, uh, the fingers all have three. Okay, flat, flat, flat. All right. So visualize that, get that in your head before we even start. And then the next trick is we've got to decide on where we're, where our wrist is going to be and uh, and work our way from there. And if you look at the, see if I can get in a little bit tighter here. So see here where the where the wrist is. Remember we had that notch in, that in the in the rough out, the notch was there, and so we were able to co complete where the sleeve was going to be. So you can see where the wrist is. It's just slightly above that, and the thumb takes off from there. So we got a little section there that's going to be straight, and so we got a little section here that's going to be straight, and then we're going to get the curve that comes around from there. And so we're going to leave all that material in here, but create that edge. So that's pretty well what I've got already established. I'll have to take a little bit out of here, that's all. And on the other side, it's the fingers are are the fingers are cupped. Okay, they're bent. But they still have that arc. So um, as long as you've got the this general shape here on the other side, you're okay. Alright. So let's start by establishing the wrist. 
taking up some material there. I'll do that and then come back. Okay, we'll move along here now. So there it is with the with the notch taken out of there. And you can see I put my uh, line across there, the same line that I put on the diagram. Okay, and now I'm going to use that as my my starting point. So I'm going to hollow down and create a little bit of a of a of a stretch in his uh, in his uh, arm here, so that the wrist is a little bit above. Notice how I've I've done that on my final one, and so like that causes the sleeve then to be pulled. Like when you're when you're when you're pushing up. And, and your arm is bent and that pulls the sleeve down and so therefore I vision, envision this as being a, a bit of a of a hollow spot in here. Okay. So that's what I'll do is I'll start to thin that down and uh, um, I'll use a combination of gouges and knives to do it. So you're going above that line to start thinning it down then? That, I'm going to thin below that line. Yeah so so I'm going to just start, I'll just leave the TV on here and just so this is how I'm going to start okay I'm going to start to bring that down and start to create that little bit of a hollow there that to stretch them out a little bit and you don't have to take any off at the sleeve end just you're just hollowing down a little bit and you can see that you know, right away you you start to get a an instant result on that. See how it starts to to bring it down. I'll maybe thin it just a little bit more. Okay, so there it is with the the wrist more or less set up, and you can see that I've got a lot of material here that I'm going to be able to play with, which is good. So now I want to establish the back the back of the hand, the back of the hand. So you can see that the back of the hand. See how the back of the hand is? It's just a curve. And I'm going to address the section from not including the thumb. So if you can you envision that straight line coming up there uh, where the thumb is not? I've eliminated it by taking put my hand over it or my finger over it. So I'm going to create a straight edge here and a and a straight edge over here. And that establishes the the width of the back of my hand. So you can draw that on or you, or you can just visualize it and do it. So I'm going to say that, put that in there. So that's the back of the hand that side and and that's kind of the back of the hand on that side there. Uh, it's still a little bit wide. I'll maybe bring that in a little bit more here. Yeah, that looks better. So the back of the hand has to more or less match what you're going to have in the glove eventually. The glove is obviously a bit bigger. but So then from there, I'm going to just uh, kind of establish that shape by using my big gouge. Upside down, that's a number five, 20 millimeter. V tool to establish the side. And a V tool to establish this side here. Don't have to go very deep, just you're just trying to create the the shape of the back of the hand. And so you can see now that I've got that shape. I'll pass this around. So there it is. Uh, So this is the one side here and this is the other side here and I would caution you not to go up into this section up at the top here because remember we got to curl that those fingers and if you wanted to hang that pinky down a little bit uh, then you, the pinky will have to fit in here somewhere so just establish like the, we're only talking about um, we're only talking about this 
this section here. So from the knuckles down to the wrist, this, this platform right here. So get that established first. Okay, let's start talking about shaping this hand. We got to keep moving here today. All right, so we've done somewhat on the back of the hand. We've established some of them at the back of the hand. But now take a look at where the knuckles are in this diagram. The knuckles start nearly in a in a completely vertical position here. I guess vertical if you're looking at it side on, if you're looking at it top on, it'll be completely horizontal. But anyway, so the knuckles are right there. That's the start of the back of the hand. So where the where the back of the hand where the back of the hand ends, the knuckles, these knuckles here, they start. So the we've got to get that plane established. So what I do is I, I'm going to mark on as I as I will right here. Yeah, can you see that? All right, so I'm going to guesstimate that that's that's where the knuckles are going to start. So if that's where the knuckles are going to start, you can see I've still got some work to do to get this plane down to create this as a flat edge coming through here. And then that'll give me the material I need in order to make that turn. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that right now so that I don't lose that edge. So there's the back of the knuckle, and now I'm going to take my gouge, that same gouge, and I'm going to start to par off material. And I'll just do a little bit so that you can see. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, maybe a little bit tighter. Yeah, so this is flat here, and then it automatically turns, and that's where the, we're going to start with the, the shape of the fingers. I'll refine that just a little bit and come back to you. So there we are with it kind of roughed in, and uh, that's where I'm going to turn my fingers there. So now you can start to see that we're going to run, start to run into a problem here, because the back of the hand ends there, so the fingers are going to have to be bent in the glove. Well, we, what are we going to do there? Well, we got to get up here now and we've got to hollow out in, in this glove. Well, be cautious because a glove has a good thickness to it, so so make a, a good size horseshoe in there because we want to leave that that thickness up here so we can play around with it but this material here we can start to take out but when you take it out take it out with keeping the hand the fingers in particular in mind because we've got to be able to access that so if you look at my finished one here you'll see what I mean see where the fingers are they end up up underneath okay but the, the thickness I'm referring to is the thickness of the glove here. We've got to make sure we maintain that. So we're going to start to hollow that out. And I would start with a V-tool and then maybe end up with a gouge to, to get that out. Okay, so you'll notice the, that the arc on the back of the hand is basically maintained all the way through the fingers. So the arc, even the fingers as they crunch, even as they close, you know, over the ball, they, they still maintain that arc. So as long as you keep removing your wood that way, so you can see here in the finished one that the back of the hand, the back of the hand has an arc. The knuckles, where the knuckles start, they, that's the arc, and the fingers, the digits in between there are arc. And then as it gets further forward, depending on the shape of your hand around the ball, it becomes a, a slightly different shape, you know, and if you want the, the the pinky curled as he does in his diagram, 
You see how the pinky is is curled? See, okay, it's not around the ball. And depending on how you grip the ball with the other three fingers, you know, you create a different shape. So if it's if the pinky is back, it's down to the side. If you want the other one down and you've got a, just two fingers on the ball, you can see how it grips it. So as that happens, look at how wide this gets from here to the pinky, okay, compared to the back of his hand, okay? So it depends on the grip that you're going to have, depends on the amount of material you need to leave for to create the fingers, okay? In my finished one, I kept them, I kept them quite close together. But if you want to spread them apart, you can. Um, in his diagram here, you can see where he has them spread a little bit apart. Okay, so that is your decision. I'll let you decide on that. But either way, you you still now can create that shape of the uh, the fingers. So now I'm going to continue with making this shape go around. Again, I'm using the the back of that that number five twenty millimeter to give me the the shape that I need for to create that arc. So there's the arc I need there. Now the next thing I'll point out is the the formation of a hand. Okay, this distance here from the wrist to the knuckles. Let me go a little bit wider there so you can see it. So the distance between the wrist and the knuckles is equal to the distance of the width. We can mess around with this. But then that same distance here is this distance here. But as you bend those knuckles, you see what happens? Alright, so then if you divide the distance between this set of knuckles here and the tip of my finger, that half that distance is where this nut, these knuckles start. If the hand is straight out, can you see where my knuckles are? They're in the shape of an arc. Basically the same arc that's going to be on top, okay? Even when you bend it, okay, that arc is maintained. See how that arc is maintained as you bend it? So now, and then the last section here, these the last set of knuckles here, that's about two-thirds the distance down and one-third to the end. So just rough, roughly, that's how we, how we can lay a hand out. So the same thing applies here. So now, if you divide that distance in half, the fingers would be somewhere, that set of knuckles would be somewhere about, about there. Okay? And depending on how much of a crunch you have them, how much of a bend you have in them, determines how much distance we leave in here. So, in but reality, the ball is going to limit the crunch. The ball is going to limit the crunch, right? Exactly. Remember that we want to have the pinky curled at the end of all of them. So now I'm going to just take that and I'm going to uh, bend that more or less straight down. Uh, I, I'm not going to see my fingertips in my finished product. So by putting my stop cut in with the gouge, I've created the arc that I need, and I'll use my V-tool then to take out the material. So another way of looking at this is as if he's got a mitten on. Yes, for the guy in Oklahoma, I don't know whether they get winter or not, but he may not know what a mitten is. He's been following me on the uh, on the net. So there you go. You see, see how simple that is. We've got the back of the hand. We've got the first set of big knuckles, and then the next set and the ball is going to be in behind there and we can shape the remove wood in, on the 
hat in order to make more material in there if we want to create the fingers back in a little bit more. Okay. Do I need to pass this around? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is, uh, first of all, keep in mind this area here is where that pinky is going to be. And so if you, if you visualize it by seeing that, you can see that it's a bit shorter here and it's a bit lower here. But before I can determine what to do with this area here, I have to work with the, the top part uh, across here. I have to divide up these fingers. I have to decide where those fingers are going to be, where the divisions are going to be. So if you take a look at my hand, you'll see that yeah, the pinky is a little bit smaller, but if you divide this distance here in half, okay, and then that distance there in half, and that distance there in half, and you can make the pinky a little bit smaller, but that's that'll help give you the concept that the fingers are di divided up, and divide them up more or less in equal portions. The second thing to be aware of is that the cut in the finger here does not come to there. It does not come to the knuckle. It stops short of the knuckle. Take a look at your hand and you'll see that the, the separation does not come all the way up to the knuckle. It can't. Otherwise the knuckles wouldn't be joined together. So keep those two concepts in mind. First of all that uh, the division of the fingers and secondly that the, the, the cut does not come up to the knuckle. Alright so I'm going to take and I'm going to guesstimate here what I'm going to do on the on the the hand and I'll turn typically I turn it upside down to work on it. So I'm going to divide the distance in half roughly and I'm going to notice I've got material up underneath the here so I can work on it up there. Maybe a little bit wider here. All right, so there I'll draw them in. So there's, turn it up the other way. So there's, there's my, oops, there we are. There's my pinky, the second finger, the third finger, and there's the last one. And it's up underneath. It's going to be up underneath the, the glove, isn't it? So if I look at it from the back of the hand perspective, you can see that it might be slightly wrong because that's got to be on a bit more of an angle in order to fit into the back of the hand. So well, that's why we have a pencil mark here. We can erase it and start again. Well, I like the way it's divided on the, the ends towards the ends of the fingers, but I got to move it in a little bit in order to get a different angle. So it looks more like that. And that helps with with the orientation with the back of the hand. Now I can shape this in here however I want later on, but that's my division. <coughs> now we want to spread those fingers to put the ball in there? Yeah, you can do that by uh, thinning down the fingers. Yeah. Okay. Leave the knuckles where they are and thin down the fingers as they, as they go in. So in other words, you increase the separation. So if I could draw one in here. So if you wanted to separate them, you can see how you can separate them, but leave the, you, you take a wedge out. Follow me? Yeah, yeah. It's the same idea. And you can do that either before or after this next step. Um, I take a, a V-tool and I, I use a, just a, a small, a relatively small V-tool and to keep my mind active as far as that separation where it doesn't go all the way up to the knuckles, I stop it just so. And so that instantly creates your fingers. So once again, by using a V-tool, it still, still allows you to, to manipulate that. You can change it one way or the other if you need to get more mo motion in there. So then I, <coughs> I know that my pinky has to be 
twist it more and curve more so that means I have to create a shelf here to lower it down in order to in order to make that pinky twist and keep the separation between the first and the second knuckle there then that's again that's just how you you do it you've, you've divided it so now create a little shelf in there I just use a v-tool on its side so you can see how it drops it down and it being a pinky it, it is a is shorter so now I can create the bottom end of that I can bring it I can bring it down I can bring it down and then I can put the curl in on the bottom remember we can still play around with that hat and, and if we need more room we just create it so now I've got the shelf for the pinky and the back part of the, of the pinky turns up or I guess on an angle 45 I guess is the best way to describe that comes down. No, I'll just do it on a 45. So there it is. If I mark on the outside, maybe you can see it better. Come in a little bit closer. So then right away you can see, well, okay, well, there's, there's the end of my finger with a few notches in there and you pretty well got your baby finger created. We worry, worry about shaping the palm in here, it's just, just going to be a curve in here to create the, uh, the palm part of the hand. We haven't even separated it down here and we're going to be able to do that a little bit better later. Okay, so the same thing applies up here. If you want to create separation, remember you're going around a, you're going a, oh, go right here. You're going around a, you're going around a ball. Okay. So fingers like this finger here is a little bit lower. This might be higher. This one down lower. And of course we've already done the pinky. It's curled around down here, right, but but you see the layers in there. You drop them down, and again, I just use a V tool to to create the those shapes. Drop this one down a little bit. This one's going to stay high. This one here, I want to maybe curl a bit a bit more to to create create the shape around the the supposed ball in behind there. So now I've got my, my various levels established there. Can you see that? What I'll do is I'll pass this around and you can have a, a better peek at it. But that's the very beginning of a, of a uh, shape of the, the fingers. Again, uh, use the V tool for separation. And I, I love this. I, this is a uh, a six mil millimeter number seven, and uh, it's just got such a nice shape to it. I can bring that in and shape the top half of the the fingers, and it gives it that nice curved shape. It even does the end piece. I'll do another one here.
bring this one back a little bit. It's a bit shorter. I'll just do the two so you can see them. So I've never used my knife up until now. And so now when I want to get the separation between them and I want to put create a stop cut in there again, you don't come all the way up to the knuckles, you stop it. So then you can go back to your number seven and and use that stop cut that you created in there. I'll pass this around now. Okay, so now we got to work on the thumb and you can see by my lines there that when I, I left my material, I left a, a fair bit of material in here so that uh, I can create a thumb. Now the thumb is going to be on the outside of the ball. So can you keep that in mind? The thumb is on the outside of the ball. But the ball itself has to be visible. So there it is in my finished one. So the thumb goes down and around and touches on the back of his head. Okay. But we got to leave this ball in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by working on just this, just the thumb and try and leave the material here to create the ball later. Okay. So get the thumb established. The ball is not the first thing to carve. You can make the ball fit into the hand, but you can't make the hand fit into the ball sometimes. Okay, so get the, we're going to do the thumb first. So we'll go over here to the unfinished one, and you can see that it has to, first of all, we have to create that, the continuous shape of the, of the thumb going to the ball. A little bit wider there. So with the ball in my hand, you can see that this is a continuous shape coming around here from the back of the hand, but it is lower, like the whole the whole finger lower, uh, where it joins right in the crotch of that joint right there. So we have to drop this all down, and the whole, like I said before, we're going to try and leave as much of this material in here as we can, so that we can create that ball later on. So just start to create your, your shapes there. I'm going to use a, a bigger V-tool in order to get that started. So right away you can start to see, well, hey, there it is. There's the thumb. Now all I have to do is shape it. I got the level. I've, I've in, just dropped it down enough. Uh, I'll massage this joint here because that looks a little bit too severe. Maybe take a gouge and just kind of get rid of some of that material there just to make that an even transition or a more even transition. There. So now the thumb, here's, here's the thing with the hand. The fingers go this way, okay? The thumb goes this way, okay? It's at a 90 degree angle to the fingers. Can you see that? So we've got to try and, try and create that idea. With the, the thumb spread, it's a little bit different of an angle, but not but not too much. Okay. So I want to just create a bit of a hollow going in there and I'll take a, a smaller V tool. Remember the, the the crotch of the hand is in here somewhere. I'll remove a bit of wood there. Kind of round this over just a bit. It tapers down and gets narrower towards the end. A lot more meat up here. take a bit bigger gouge this time to this is a what a number five 10 millimeter but it gives me that nice shape
And I haven't touched the ball yet. I haven't addressed any part of that. And I'm just going to smooth out a few things here and then got a bit of a knuckle there. So it looks something like that. So now you can see that there's a the transition between the wrist and the thumb is continuous. It joins on in the hand, okay, part way up. And we got it roughed in. I'll pass it around. <laughs> 